We all feel the effects of high inflation in our everyday living costs. In recent years, global inflation has been high, unprecedentedly so. One of the biggest spikes was caused by the Covid pandemic, when the global rate reached nearly 9% in late 2022. This spike was larger than that caused by the banking crisis of 2008. And today, inflation. 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 is still very much an ongoing issue. For those in the financial sector, it has been hard to navigate. In August 2022, the IFOA issued a risk alert to actuaries when UK inflation hit 10%. Actuaries had to adjust how they worked. The standard assumptions and stress tests didn't apply. And the effects are still being felt. One of the biggest risks is climate change. Two actuaries at Milliman have been exploring how inflation and climate risk interact. They think current actuarial climate models don't do enough. We've been using the Earth's resources in the past. We haven't been paying for them. So moving into a world that is more sustainable means paying for these things and that will be inflationary. Some of the models um, have indirect impacts. You may point to impacts on sort of GDP. You may point to things like carbon pricing. But actually, the explicit element of inflation is typically missing or may be derived from a GDP or other sort of monetary aspect. Whereas if you're thinking about this from an actuarial lens, you know, inflation and interest rates are typically the two biggest things that we need to look at. Their solution to this problem? They created a causal model an approach that takes into account combinations of stresses, complexities and connections. Ultimately, it aims to be more realistic and therefore more meaningful. And I hope what comes across um, quite obviously is that there's a narrative to the way that that model has been constructed. Um, you can see the kind of pathways from a driver to the ultimate impact of either volatility or inflation um, and that is explainable and it's understandable. So then when we use something like a causal model for um, like scenario analysis or something, it becomes a very powerful risk management tool. We can set the scenario up within the model by each of the blocks which represents a node, by setting them each in different states and understanding what the impact could be from that. And the other thing is we could do a reverse stress test in the way that the model feeds down through the relationships. The message is clear. No actuaries can be complacent these days about inflation. And that applies across the sector, climate scenarios included. If you're an actuary, ask yourself these questions. Does your modelling allow for the inflationary effects of the transition to low carbon? Do you understand how tensions may build to create inflation spikes? Do your models implicitly assume a sustained 2% inflation target? I think the real sort of message here, though, is that, you know, if we actually look at the underlying and we look and we actually accept that this is a complex problem with many interactive parts, where if we go through a transition, then that meaning of that word, a transition economy, means the future economy will not be the same as the past. And the real question is, do your forecasts actually allow for those changes and that change in risk process? Do you have a prospective view on the risk? And I think then to really have a look at the ways that we're using sort of causal mapping and actually be able to have narrative explanations, it's such a more powerful tool so it actually helps as a risk management tool to say, actually, I can see where this arises and I got a better understanding and intuition in the sorts of areas which help mitigate those risks or plan future adaptations. For more on this topic, see the January-February issue of The Actuary or visit theactuary.com.